Welcome everyone. We're excited to have you here. While everyone is joining, we're going to be adding a Figma file into the chat for you to access. If you've never signed up for Figma before, please register for the free account so you can follow along. And we are also going to add a link to Google Drive. There's a zip file that Kevin has shared with us that will also help with today's presentation. And as more people are joining, please feel free to add your LinkedIn, your Tableau Public, any way that we can connect and interact with each other. That's We're right. happy to have you. That's right. Like, like uh, Erica said, if you have any job posting, job posts out there that you want uh, to share with other ones here, they're always looking for jobs. Uh, more than happy, please post your 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 pro anything that you want from your company that you if you want us to look at your um, any type of uh, job that you have related to Tableau, BI. Um, more than happy to help you out. Yeah, if you're from like I see here, someone from Jacksonville. Yes, please. I don't know where you're from. Yeah. I know. Um, Do we have a big Chicago audience from Kevin? That's what I'm mm -hmm. curious about. That is true. That is true. Yeah. So we're going to wait a couple minutes, let more people join, like you said, interact in the chat, and we'll get on with the presentation soon. Excellent. Yeah, we have Dacia from Tampa. We have Haim from Jacksonville, California. Wow, Catherine from California. She shared her profile. Awesome, from Tableau Public, Tampa. I'm from Orlando, uh, Erica from Orlando. So Orlando, Florida here. I'm, I'm like, to give you guys an idea, I'm like eight minutes from Universal Studios, eight minutes. 15 <laughs> minutes, from, 20 minutes from Disney. Nancy mentioned that she's registered for Figma, but um, it's very slow to open. Kevin, have you had any experience with that? You mean opening the Figma? link or because it's a oh. web link so it should be depending on the speed of your yeah your webs your internet speed yeah i've not heard hopefully figma the the, the company didn't break down in a bit in this like 90 minutes that would be epic uh let me click around yeah for those of you who have just joined i'm adding a figma link for you for the presentation if you haven't registered for Figma yet, uh, please sign up for a free account so you can use that link and follow along. And then also Kevin has shared with us a zip file. Oh, I'm not sending this to everyone. That's incorrect. Um, so let me correct that. And the zip file also, please download it so you can follow along. So there are two files, a zip file and a link to Figma. That's right. We have Lane from Tampa, uh, Diego from Austin, Texas. I love Austin, Texas. So good food. Such a good food, Diego, over there. Um, Boston, Tampa, Tampa, Perry, John from Tampa. Wow, from India. We have someone from India. Uh, Lawrence from Colorado. Yeah, super cool. And I did see a job posting in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, you see one? Mm -hmm. So there's a senior data scientist opening. So if you are looking for a new opportunity, please mm -hmm. consider uh, looking in the chat. Um, the Very uh, good. recording and the chat should be available uh, following the meeting. Wow, we have John from Hong Kong. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. <laughs> Hong Kong, Kevin. So we have somebody from Hong Kong here. This is great. Um, and uh, his name is John NG, and we have uh, Alicia from Fort Myers, David from Chicago, Narendra from St. Louis. This is great. Uh, Justin. Oh, we have Lucas uh, Arabio from Brazil. Yeah, we have a lot of. I have a lot of friends from Brazil. My company. We have. We have a lot of people in Brazil. Uh, Laura from Dallas. 
Uh, Frederick from Philadelphia, and we have Peckley from Raleigh. All over. So pretty cool. Thank so you, everybody, yes, for being here. This is an awesome, diverse group. So please uh, add your LinkedIn profiles, your Tableau Public. We'd all mm -hmm. like to connect with each other. And for those of you who haven't accessed it yet, I am adding the Figma file into our chat. You can access the file. Uh, if you haven't registered for Figma yet, it will prompt you to register for a free account. And then the other link is a link to a Google Drive document for you to download so you can follow along with today's presentation. So please do that as we're kind of having some more people trickle in and then we'll be ready to go uh, as soon as Kevin starts. So any questions, post in the chat. And like we said, introduce yourselves. We're excited to have you all here. So as more people trickle in, I just want to welcome you and thank you for joining today's uh, meeting. We are very excited to have a presentation about Figma. It's been one of the hot topics we've received as a leadership team at the Florida Tug. And as we start, I would like to introduce our leadership team. Uh, today with me on the call is Yamil. Uh, he's a great advocate for Tableau and is a Tableau ambassador. So I'd encourage you all to connect with him. He's added his LinkedIn profile in the chat, or you can just uh, you know, search his name. We also have Aaron Simmons, Andrew Kim, Jeffrey Baker, and Katie Weander. Uh, they're all great members of this team and they help us get such dynamic speakers and awesome topics for you. Um, we are here to help. You can reach out to us in any of the following ways. We're on LinkedIn. You can reach out through email, through Twitter. And then always we encourage you to check out our event pages. We host an event every month. And following Kevin's presentation, we'll show you a little bit of a preview of what's coming up next. And I encourage you all to stay until the end. One reason is we are going to be giving out some opportunities to get swag from the Tableau gift store to three of our audience members. So we will email you following the meeting, but it's only eligible for those who stay to the end. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Kevin Wee. Uh, Kevin is a senior business intelligence analyst at Discover Financial Services. And he's been an amazing person that I've connected with on LinkedIn because of all of the content that he posts. He's very creative and the magic that he's able to do with Figma is always so impressive. Uh, I am not surprised that Adam uh, Michael of a Tableau visionary had selected Kevin as one of what he considers Tableau's next, those that are up and coming and are going to make a big impact in the data community. Uh, please feel free to connect with Kevin on Tableau Public, Twitter, LinkedIn. And uh, I will let Kevin tell you a little bit more about himself. And while he's doing it, I'm going to add those two links one more time, one for the Figma file and one for the zip file so that you can download them as he prepares to guide us through how to connect Figma and Tableau and what they can do together. Cool. So do I just keep on uh, presenting it until the end and then you'll do your slides or you're going to do that in between? Yeah, so you can you do your thing and then I will wrap up the meeting. Awesome. Cool. That is, um, give me one sec, I'm going to swap the screen around. I'm just gonna, I prefer to stare straight instead of looking at the right for an hour. So let's share the screen. Cool, let me know when, uh, whenever you guys can see my screen. Awesome. I need a thumbs up from, okay, yeah. Oh, oh. We, we, we can see it, perfect, perfect. Cool. 
So uh, one more thing, put put any any questions, uh, anybody on the chat while Kevin is going through it. And I will, you know, let Kevin know if there is a question or anything like that. So if you have any questions, put it on the chat. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Awesome. So uh, my name is Kevin. Um, welcome to this uh, Florida slash Orlando Tableau user group, where today I'll be talking about how to design modern looking background images for business dashboard. And if you stay till the if you stay till the end, there's some bonus content from my end as well. So good for y'all. I don't have swag though, FYI. <laughs> okay, now let's, oh, that's the last one. Okay, cool. Now let's talk about a little bit about me. Well, first of all, uh, the thing you need to know about me are three things. First of all, I'm a multilingual. I speak English, Mandarin, Cantonese, Malay. Earlier, I saw someone from Hong Kong. So uh, welcome. And yeah, uh, my mom uh, is a Cantonese. Uh, my grandma's side, uh, my mom's side's family, they're Cantonese. So I do speak the language. I also speak several other Chinese uh, languages and dialects. So sometimes when you notice that the grammar that I'm coming out of my mouth uh, doesn't make sense, it's because it would have made sense in different languages. The second thing that you need to know about me is I pivoted my career twice um, till now. Uh, I used to be a molecular biologist working in a lab, but later I transitioned into analyzing what kind of design that make a scientific animation easier to be learned by students. And since last year, I further pivoted my career into uh, data visualization in full time. So now I'm a data visualization developer. Uh, I have a PhD in digital media evaluation from Purdue University. And you must uh, be thinking, why is this person has anything to do with Tableau? Well, the story is, when I was analyzing the scientific animation in 2019, I noticed that even though there's a lot of data coming out of it, I have a lot of data from the student, a lot of data from the animation itself, I, there's no way for me to easily present the material until I learned that there's a tool called Tableau, it's a data visualization software allowed us to concisely present the finding. That's when I started to pick up the software. And I also started to learn how to use Figma to, uh, to kind of boost the design of my data visualization since last year. And fast forward to now, I am a regular uh, DataFam Challenge participant. Uh, I was featured uh, by Tableau as a, a, a Tableau public author last year, and I've been talking in several uh, talk. And I like to see myself as a data visualization experimentalist. That's actually a term that coined by uh, Chindi Nosu. Uh, we were talking in private and he told me that he actually liked the, 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 the kind of slightly out of the boundary experiments that I've been doing on Tableau Public. And currently I'm a senior BI analyst at, at Discover Financial Services, which is the credit card company, not Discovery Channel. So, uh, and I'm also based at Chicago. So now let's talk about Figma. Why Figma? What is it? So for those who are registered to this course, I believe that you at least heard of the term. Figma, it seems like a very fancy graphic design tool. To me, the most important feature it has, at least for now, is it's free <laughs> for most of us. And it's very user-friendly, it's web-based, so you don't have to save anything on your computer. You can work anywhere as long as you have the account password. And to me personally, it's way easier to be used than Adobe Illustrator, but way more powerful than Microsoft PowerPoint. And later I'm gonna show you why and how. And because of these features, it's heavily leveraged by many companies in app development. If the company that you're currently working on, uh, working with, uh, has an app, for example, Discover uh, Financial Services, we have our own app, chances are the UI team, they're using Figma in developing that app. And that's a good news for you. And later I'm gonna explain why. And also I'd like you to think in this way, all of the business dashboard that we are developing, we are developing an app. So using this feature and this mindset, we can see that, uh, Figma started to be leveraged more and more by the data fam uh, community in data visualization practices. There are several ways that they're doing that, and this is definitely not an exhaustive list. 
but mainly people use it on prototyping or designing background images or annotation images. I'm going to show you that more later, or do some very fancy UI interface, uh, UI design, or to develop the whole design system for all dashboard within the company. I'm going to show you some example here. Um, let's talk about prototyping. For those who are not familiar with the term prototyping, it's basically a fancy way to say that I sketch something before really creating the dashboard. So in a challenge that I participated um, a couple uh, months ago, uh, in the back to this basic challenge, I was asked to uh, create a mock-up for a set of hotel data to see how that uh, hotel company is performed over uh, time. And you can see that I started with like pen and paper sketch, right? Oh, I'm sorry, let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, a little bit too much. Okay, pen and paper sketches. Like we're gonna put some KPI here on top and then we're gonna put some chart on the bottom left and then a map on the bottom right. And then gradually I increased the fidelity of the sketches. I add more and more detail in it as I start to plan things out. And using Figma, you can see that I started to create boxes as a placeholder to plan things out. And as time progresses, very quickly, I come up with a mock-up that is quite good for, for the business partner to see whether the dashboard design is moving towards the direction that we want. And I'd like to show the ultimate uh, interactive prototype that I've done on Figma. So this thing doesn't contain any data. It is just a fake dashboard, but it has many basic uh, interactivity that a Tableau can offer. For example, you can click around the tab on the left to uh, look at different pages of the dashboard. You can click on different KPI to switch the charts like how you would have done it using parameter using Tableau. You can also switch uh, within the chart, switch things at different level of details. So these are the things that we could have done on Tableau, but we don't want to spend that, that much time on Tableau before the business partner said yes, and then we can start producing the dashboard. So this is what we mean when we say we can use Figma to do prototyping. We can also use Figma to do other things like creating a background image for a dashboard. This is something that I created for the real world fake data challenge. You can see that this is a dashboard about HR attrition analytics. And this thing looked fancy, but the truth is the charts are from Tableau. The filters are from Tableau. The rest are just one static image. The rest is just one static image. It just looked fancy, but it's more like a, a, an illusion <laughs> than I really hard code anything. And the thing is, in this dashboard, there are also some advanced UI that we can do using Figma and Tableau. For example, the navigation tab here, when you click on it, the color change, the color of the tab changes like this. And another thing is, I also using the show hide container function on Tableau, I can show hide a whole new semi-transparent layer of annotation that I created from Figma. So these are different examples of how we can use Figma on Tableau. And you can, uh, I'm not gonna go through like all the uh, small detailed things of what Figma can do. Just feel free to follow my work on my Tableau public and you can see more of them and you can play on all of the new charts that I created. They're all Figma powered in a way, so. So Kevin, we do have one question in the chat already. They're wondering sure. where did you get the chart and data items for what you've displayed in Figma so far? Which one? Uh, uh, which dashboard that, that they're talking about? Yeah, I, I'm assuming it's your second one based on the timing of the comment, the uh, Everest group. This one? Oh, this is Prototype. from... This is from the real world fake data challenge. If you Google that challenge on online, they will show you the data set. I didn't come up with the data set myself. Um, so this currently, this prototype that you're showing is in your Tableau public. The first one that you showed it, that's the uh, that it was making the data interactive within Figma. How did you do that? Or is that exactly. something that you're gonna explain later? So, so Kevin, I think what they're saying is 
they see charts here, right? Like we can see the bar charts, the different yeah. charts, the different things here. Maybe that's mm -hmm. what they're asking. Like, where, how do you got that? Like he said, he means in Figma. Yeah, I, I can see it here in the chat. So where, how do you got this in Figma, all those charts? That's what I, I think. think so well, for, long story short, none of the things that you see are real. There are no real data here. I came up with all of the lines <laughs> of the width of the bar chart, the color in the map, all of those are fake. There's no real data here. I just keep on changing things like by random. So, but that's a good question. So that's the thing about prototyping, right? Unless you know the trend in the data, you can make the prototype looks very much like the trend in the data set, or you can just like wing it so that people can focus on the design rather than uh, the, the data themselves. Um, and today we're not spending any time on talking about prototyping. That was its own one hour talk, and but perhaps we can talk about it in the future. Cool, but okay, now let's go back to the presentation. Awesome. So this is the dashboard that we will be building together today. Oh, it's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit blocked here. This is the dashboard that we, we will be building today. It looked complicated and fancy, but the truth is I have already prepped all of these charts for you. I've already made them in a zip file that Erica has provided and she may be providing that again later. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to create a background image for this dashboard and we're gonna move forward from it. And are you ready to level up? And if you are, there, here are the things that you may do. First of all, please set up two monitors. Uh, if you have two monitors, you, you're gonna put my face on one side and then you're gonna work on the other side. And please get a Figma file that I believe Erica's working on putting in the chat now, uh, the Figma file. And by clicking the Figma file, you they will ask you to create a new Figma account. And you just need to register it, go to your like email and then verify your account and then go back to the file and also download the Google zip file that Erica will be put will be putting in the chat. The zip file contains the charts, the Tableau files that we will be using later. Cool, I'm gonna give uh, us about one to two minutes when I'm chucking my drinks. <laughs> so while you're chugging your drinks, mm -hmm. someone did ask, do you have to use a fixed size dashboard in order to use it as a background image? And I guess in my Figma naive little experience, that's what I've done, but I don't know, is there a way to make it more dynamic, Kevin? No, uh, it's uh, the area of the dashboard has to be in fixed size. And frankly, even before using Figma, I find using fixed size dashboard compared to an auto fitted dashboard, a fixed size dashboard give us the dashboard developer more control over what to present to the user, right? You don't want to show the user a dashboard and then when they have a giant screen, everything just becomes so small. You want to optimize their experience. So before Figma, I've been using fixed size dashboard. So that kind of fit into Figma's feature. Cool, shall we move on? There is one more question before you move on. They're asking, how does the fixed size translate to mobile? I'm assuming you're only building like full scale dashboards, not doing the various, I guess, kind of dynamic sizes between like tablet, standard and mobile. No, I am, uh, I have, first of all, I personally have not tried to build any mobile uh, dashboard, but that's been at a, one of like on my bucket list to make Figma works for it. I'm picturing that you just need to, in the mobile app, create another size for mobile, a very long one, and then design, re, basically redesign the dashboard entirely in the uh, mobile mode. That's what I'm thinking, but that I don't have any uh, experience to support that statement. Cool, let's move on. Now, uh, by the end of this workshop, which starting now, you should be able to create a new Figma file create a new background image, apply the image into Tableau desktop, and learning how to add a semi-transparent annotation layer to the dashboard if we have the time to do so. And I'm gonna introduce you to more learning resources so that you can pick up the skill even after today.
Here are some screenshot, uh, uh, basically a screenshot of some shortcut that you need to know uh, moving into Figma. And then you don't have to remember everything, just the first two. I'm going to show you the first two, and then we can. Oh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Here, 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 here. Here. Okay. So, first of all, all of you that want to follow along, you should have the worksheet now. And first of all, let's learn how to zoom in and out. In the Figma file, if you're using a laptop, you can do that on the mouse pad. It's very intuitive. But if you're using a mouse and keyboard, you need to click Control or Command and then just scroll the middle, the, 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 the wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. So that's how you zoom in and out. Erica, can you nod if you're following? Good. <laughs> yep. And the other thing is how to move things like left and right, up and down. And to move things uh, horizontally or um, vertically, here's what you can do. I'm going to create a circle real quick. Here is a circle. To move it, like you can move it like in any direction that you want, right? I'm going to make it red. Okay. But if you want to move them just like straight to the left or straight upward, you can click shift. And then you can move your cursor around. It's easier for you, that, for you to move things in one degree of freedom. Right? This is already better than uh, PowerPoint, in my opinion. <laughs> okay. So these are two things that you will be needing a lot today. So that's two. Okay. Now let's the rest you can just like, learn them later. Uh, your time. Someone is talking. Yeah. Uh, yes. Hi. This is Hiram. This is my first uh, talk meeting uh, with this talk. I just have a quick question. How do you add in the menu uh, the circle icon from the from the menu tab? I only see the red title. I'm going to demo that later. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Cool. There we go. Cool. So now um, let's start with how to create a new file. So this is Figma, right? If you're looking at a worksheet now, how about creating your own file? So you can click the F logo on the top left and then click go uh, back to file. Click back to file. And then you will be navigated to this page. If you type figma.com, it will bring you to the same page as well. So when you click new design file, this is how you create a new canvas for creation. Yamil, can you give me a thumb up if you're following? Cool, great. Now let's go back to the old file. <laughs> I'm gonna come back to the old file, I believe it is this one. Nope, it's not for me, for you guys, it's this one. I keep on backing up my file so that I'm, I'm very par paranoid in that way. Okay, cool. The other thing that I'd like to show you is if we, you come back to the worksheet, you can see that I'm gonna introduce you to the existing interface of Figma. Some of you are using a dark mode, some of you are using a light mode, it doesn't matter. Um, the top here is always the name of the file. You can name it, name it however you want. Like, for example, I can name it like one, two, three. Oh. One, oh, sorry. I, I can name it like one, two, three, Orlando, like that. It's very easy for you to rename the file. And if you go counterclockwise, these are just a menu for you to go back to the file, for you to select a cursor, for you to uh, create a new canvas for creation or draw a different shape, like draw a rectangle, a circle, triangle, a star, or place an image or an arrow, and then you can uh, input some text. So this is like the menu, just like PowerPoint system, very intuitive. And on the left here, this looks complicated, but it's very similar to the hierarchy layout on the left when you are using Tableau desktop. Okay, and the key takeaways is from bottom to the top, it's from the bottom layer, of the file to the top layer of the file. So let's say you want to create something with multiple layer. You want to arrange them in a way that the bottoms goes to the bottoms, the top goes to the top. Yep, make sense? Cool. And then on the right here, these are the feature of whatever things that you click. For example, here, I'm gonna click this square. On the right here, it will show you the X and Y locations of a square. It show you the width and height of a square. And it even show that the square is slightly rounded, like in a radius of four. 
And if you go down here, you can also see that this is the color. I can change it to whatever color that I want. So earlier I said that if your company has a UI team that is using Figma, go talk to them. They will very uh, openly share with you the color that they're using, the size, the shape that they're using. It's gonna make your creation very easy. And the other thing I like to show is here, the stroke means outline. So here I can create a black outline like that. That is the width of the outline. And then that is just for you to create some shadow. Later, we're gonna come back to this later, but just for you to know, these are where things at. Cool. Now let's learn how to create a frame. A frame is basically a canvas for you to put things in it. It doesn't contain any information until you uh, add color or add shapes in it. So on the left side, uh, right side of the frame, I would like you to draw a frame here. So how do we draw a frame? Click the hashtag sign here. That's a frame. And you can just like hit on the right here, just drag something like this. So that is a frame. That's how you create a frame. And you say that, how do we resize the frame? You can drag it like this, but sometimes for me, because I'm a control freak, I like all of my dashboard within the same company in the same size. I can just here type in the dimension that I want, for example, 1200 and 744. That's the dimension that we will be using later. Everybody's following? Cool. Now let's talk about renaming the frame. You don't want to have a lot of frame, like frame 100, frame 101, right? So here you can do this to rename the frame. Double click, top right. You can type things like X, Y, Z. Alternatively, you can go back to the uh, layout hierarchy on the left. You can change it here as well. P, Q, R, like that. Make sense? So that's how you create a frame. How to edit the color of a frame. You here you can see that now currently the fill, which is the color of the frame is F, 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 which is the hex code for white. You can create something like yellow by just select the color here, click yellow. Oh, it's not, that is very not yellow. Okay, that's slightly yellower, something like this. Or you can just type in the hex code for any color that you want to use or your company wants to use. For example, I know that Discover is using this, as orange. <laughs> that's what happened when you keep on developing this, you kind of memorize the hex code of everything. Cool. So that's how you can manipulate the color. And the other thing, more fancy thing that you can do is you can create a shade. For example, if I go back to FFFFFF, which is white, I can add another layer of color here and I can click linear. And then now I can slightly manipulate the gradient of the dash the color to make it look slightly fancy. Cool. So that is the functionality that you have. So that's how you create a frame. And a frame is very much like a shape, but the thing about a frame is you can only create within the frame. For example, here, if I draw a circle, which I can click by the circle here, ellipse circle, when I draw a circle and let's say I just make it red. Oh, I'm gonna make this one bigger. You can see that if I push it to the edge, it will not show outside of the canvas. That is the functionality of a frame. You can design something only within the frame. Um, so a frame, another powerful thing about a frame is you can create grid for it to align things. That is one big thing that I like about Figma. So here, do you see the layout grid on the right? Layout grid. If you click plus, it would give you the grid currently by default in a size of 10 pixel. And you're going to be like, okay, what's so special about 10 pixel? Pixels is also the grid system used in Tableau. If you use PowerPoint, it will be in inches or centimeters, depending on where you're from. So using both like commensurable systems is going to help you design dashboard better. And I personally like it to be 12. So what you can do is you can click the grid icon and it changes to 12. And you can change the color of the grid. For example, you want it to be green, or a green is a little bit too difficult to read, blue. And you can make it uh, more, uh, less transparent and more prominent. You can, the, so this number is transparency. You can just go to 100. So now it's solid blue line. I just demonstrate this for you for demonstrating purposes. Everybody still following? Cool. 
And you're going to be like, okay, what's the power of a grid? You can align things so easily with a grid. So here, I'm going to align this circle. You can see that when I move it around, when you move the circle or square, better yet, if you move a square around, it would all it, it would like kind of click into the grid when you have the grid. Without a grid, it's going to make it harder for you to align things. So with this functionality, later it's going to make you aligning the charts very, very easily. Cool. I see that Haiti is like nodding. <laughs> in Mandarin, we call it that she's nodding like pounding the garlic in the mortal and pestle. That's, <laughs> that's how she nods. Good. Okay. And the other thing about grid is you can show and hide all grids on Figma very easily. So on your keyboard, I like you to click Shift and then G, G for uh, G for Gucci, <laughs> Shift G, Shift G. You can see that by doing that, you summon all grid or you hide all grid. So it's kind of easier for you to manipulate uh, the design. So now let's come back to shape, how to draw a shape. Earlier we kind of touched on it, but now I like to dive deeper into how to draw shapes. So here, let's start with drawing a square. A square is basically a rectangle, right? But with the same uh, width and length. So here you can do something like, just type in on the right here, 120, 120. So now you should have a square. And to change the color, like what we just discussed, you can change the color however you like, like that. Very simple. And to add the text, just use the T icon on the top left, click it. And then within the square, you can type like A, B, C, like that. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And to enlarge the size of a square, you, changing width and height is not gonna work. You need to go to the text control here, mm -hmm. and then you can change the font to let's say 20 like this, make sense? You can also change the, um, what do you call this thing? Uh, font, <laughs> hyperface, uh, urbanist, something that I like. And the thing is, if your company are have been using Figma, like the UI team's been using Figma, here by default, you should have your company's font. So that's all been awesome for Discover because we have our own fancy font. So go back and check with the UI team in your company to see whether you, you guys have a font or not. If not, the default font is fine. You can also change the uh, like the width uh, of the font like this or the color of the font, just like what we discussed earlier. I'd like to show you how to align things. It's very similar to PowerPoint. Click the two things that you like to align like this, one, or you can just like drag them like this, one and two. You can click the align icon on the top left, uh, top right, that's how you align things. Good. Now let's recreate another square. But this time we want a square with just an outline, like, like a square. I'm gonna this time use 80s, 80s. And I just want an outline. Outline in Figma's language is called a stroke. So that is an outline. And you can control the width of the outline like this. And it can, you can also, just a little bit advanced, but you can also control whether you want a stroke to be within the boundary, outside of the boundary, or in the center of the boundary, like that. Cool. For today's purpose, just keep everything within the boundary. Good. Another thing I'd like to show you is create something more fancy like this, okay? The same, so now I'm so tired of drawing square over and over again. So here's another trick for you. Try control, D for donkey, control donkey or command donkey. And then now when you drag that away, you should have a duplicate like that. You can do something similar on PowerPoint, but I believe there's no shortcut. Following? Cool. So now let's create something that with a white field. Fill here, F, 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 F. And then we're gonna get rid of the stroke, by getting rid of the stroke, just click the minus icon. And we're gonna create something with a rounded angle like this. So how do we do that? The rounded and radius uh, number here, just type in, let's say four. So now you have something that's slightly rounded like this. If you wanna go crazy, I do 12, just because all in dashboard, everything's bigger. Yep, 
So now you have a rounded square like that. And let's add a very soft shadow at the back. To add a shadow, you go to effect on the right, effects on the right, click plus. It would automatically give you a shadow that's very solid. <laughs> I personally don't like it. So how to manipulate a shadow? You can click the sun icon here. You can control the X and Y dimension of the shadow. X and Y like that. I'm going to do it like this for dramatic purposes so that you can see it. You can blur the shadow. Oh, by the way, you might have seen me do this. So X and Y here, you can either key in a number or you can put your cursor in the middle of X and the number. You should see the left and right arrow. You should see a, a left and right arrow like this. Click it and drag it. You should control the parameter like that. That is also another thing that you cannot do on PowerPoint, which gives you like very pixel control over everything. And if you increase the number of blur, the shadow will become blurrer, literally. And spread is just make the shadow bigger or smaller. Okay. And then also you can change the color of the shadow to fit your need. So these are the basic elements of drawing. And I'm not gonna go through all of this list because of the time, but I want you to know that by later with the worksheet that you have, you can click on anything. It will show you the dimension. All you have to do is just reverse engineer what I created, okay? And the other thing that I really like you to learn is how to copy the property of one thing to another. For example, here, I created this very fancy white card with a fancy shadow, right? Instead of copying off these numbers and then repeat it in another object, you can do something like this. Right hand click and then select copy paste as, and then select copy properties, click it. And then in a new shape that you want to paste the property, just right hand click, copy paste as, Paste properties, boom. So now the property has been transferred from one thing to another. That would make you creating a lot of dashboard within a short time very, very easily. I'm gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna create a circle. Okay. I'm gonna click this like graded square, right hand click, copy paste as, copy property. And then in the circle, I'm gonna paste the visual properties of the square like that. Now you have a gradient circle. <clears throat> so in other words, after today, you can just copy and paste the property in my dashboard and then create your own. <laughs> you don't have to start anything from scratch. Nowadays in this century, no one start anything from scratch. Cool, good. Okay, this is a checkpoint. How's everybody doing so far? Okay, can I get a thumbs up? Cool. Any emergency questions that I need to address in the chat? I do not see any emergency questions. Uh, if you want, I can ask you about fonts, about how do you get some go-to fonts within Figma? Someone was curious, kind of maybe what's our what's some favorites? What would you recommend? So uh, first of all, uh, working uh, in a big company like Discover, because we have our own uh, ad, uh, app development team, I don't get to decide the font. Discover has its own branding font. So go back, check, check the branding uh, style guides of your company because they may already have a font readily for you to use. If not, for, for compatibility with Tableau existing font, I would go to, I would usually use the font, I'm gonna make this bigger. I'm gonna use the font like, um, Inter, which is the default font, which is good enough because you can control different weight of it. Uh, Urbanist is my new favorite, just because I use it in a, 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 a another project. This two works well. Helvetica, it's the like a lot of things use Helvetica. A lot of like modern artists poster use Helvetica, but people have been saying that yeah, it's it start it started to become like Calibri, because everybody's using Helvetica. Helvetica doesn't seem to be unique anymore. So Helvetica, Inter, and Urbanis are a good starting point. If not, feel free to explore it yourself. Just don't go too crazy when it comes to professional business dashboard. 
So within Figma, is there a helps or documentation that does list like all their fonts and show them how they do? Because the one thing I noticed is, you know, there's the text that you can switch to anything, but you don't have a preview necessarily of how it will look. That's been a complaint by the community. Like you can't do that readily. There is a plugin that you can find it. I'm gonna, we can talk about it later, but there's a plugin called Better Font Picker that you can go find. Just go to Google and type Better Font Picker Figma plugin. And then they'll teach you how to use it. It's, 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 it, it doesn't represent all the fonts within Figma file. So it only like show you preview of some of the fonts, but you're gonna start somewhere. But yes, that's a question that's been complained heavily by the community. But I have a question. Oh, then, um, the, yeah, you have the other question, yeah. Emil? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I have a question here. I, I wonder, I wanted to ask the same thing. So uh, this is a very good question. So it says, with Figma templates, do you need to use con Tableau containers then, or maybe reduce the use of Tableau containers? So imagine a lot of people don't like, like containers become kind of like, complicated or like confusing uh, for so many people. So let me know what you think. Good question. I will be, uh, I will address that later. Awesome. But yes, it's, it's within the content that I covered. Cool. Now let's move on a little bit. The other thing is about importing logo because every company has a logo. Um, how to import a logo? Um, well, first of all, before saying this, I'm just gonna show you this. You thought drawing these are fundamentary, but the thing is, when someone give you a dashboard like this, I actually just drew it on my own whiteboard. Like, okay, Kevin, create something like this for me. All you have to do is just to put all of them together like this. It is just shape on like text above shapes. So now when you look at this dashboard, I want you, I, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed because now you know that you actually know how to create all of this. You just need to put them in the right place. Cool. And the other thing that I'd like to show you is the template, the template split. Okay. The other trick that I'd like to teach you is how to arrange things look like this. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And there are many ways to do that. The easiest way, uh, which I do not recommend, is to like make it smaller. Like, first of all, summon a grid, shift G, shift G to summon a grid. And you can size it like this and then duplicate it, like control D, duplicate it like this, and then keep on doing this till like sunset, <laughs> right? Like you can keep on doing this, uh, which is good enough because it's still very fast. Like you can do this very fast, but sometimes there are better way to do it, which uh, can make it, you don't have to do that many math in your head. Like sometimes you want to equally divide it, a row into like five, like, container, right? And you don't want to do the math with a calculator. How do I divide the thing with five? So here's something that I'd like to introduce to you, a plugin. This is a plugin called Split Shape. I'm going to put it in uh, the chat. Oh, I actually can't see the chat. Can, you know what? I'm going to stop sharing my screen for one sec. And oh, here, chat, awesome. Here, there's a plugin for Split Shape. I'd like you to click Try It Out and then go back to your Figma file. Come here, click try it out, and then go back to your file. And then now, click the square, um, click the white card, right hand click, and then go to plugin. You should see something that call split shape. Give me a thumb up if you can see it. If not, try refreshing your uh, file. Refresh the whole web page. Okay, click it split shape. And then here it would ask you like, how would you like to go crazy <laughs> with your uh, shape uh, splitting? So here I, I can say something like, I always split things into five columns, like three row. Gutter means uh, the, 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 the space between different container. Usually I do 12. Margin is the overall space outside. Usually I just pick zero. So something like this. And when you click split, it will split things into equally like this. Do you see it? Yep. And then this is already very close to what we had earlier, because now all I have to do is just merge this two together, merge, merge this two together, and then get rid of all of this. So I can do something like this. I get rid of this one, get rid of that one, and then merge them like this. And then merge this two like this. 
right? You can use this to very smartly plan out your dashboard without too much calculation on a calculator, too much pounding calculator. Cool. Now let's, oh, yeah, do you, did you raise your hand, Yamil? No? Yeah, so I was just thinking, uh, the game, what about this? You know, we, we're all talking here. We're over 100 people are here right now. And mm -hmm. we're talking about Tableau and we're going to use this for Tableau. What I was wondering, mm -hmm. I mean, you can use this for a presentation, right? You can use this for like, maybe a PowerPoint, like or doing a deck. I know there are some people here that I know do a lot of decks that they work with survey data and things like that. I mean, yep. this could be a, a use for other things too. Yeah, right? That's exactly, I mean, uh, very meta <laughs> in a way that I, that's exactly what I'm doing now. Yep. Exactly. Amen. <laughs> cool. Now let's go back to logo real quick. So when it comes to logo, basically it's an image. What you have to do is just click the fourth icon on the top and then click place image. And then you can go to pick whatever file that you want and then drag it in. The other way that you can do it, which I like it better is, I'm going to put this aside. Let's say you have the image in, uh, let's say your desktop or in a file, you can do this. I'm gonna hide the grid, shift G to hide the grid. Let's say this is the logo. All you can do is just click it, drag it, drop it like that. Click, drag, drop. That is how you input a logo. So that's, let's say that's my company's logo. And you can put it there. You can see that it looks really good uh, in dark background. And to size the logo, click shift. To size the logo, click shift and then click one of the, and then you can start dragging it like that. Cool. So now, yeah, in the dashboard that we have just created earlier, I'm gonna bring it back here. In the dashboard that we just created earlier, this one, we can just do the same, right? Oh, I'm gonna demo again. Click the logo, drag it, drop it in the dashboard. And then I'm gonna zoom in like crazy. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, sorry, this one. Drag it to the top, drag it to the top, click shift, size it a little bit smaller like this. And then I can shift G to summon the grid. Uh, red is a little bit difficult to see. Let me change the color of the grid real quick. Change it to uh, white. Cool, and then change this to white okay now i can just place this within the grid like this shift size very quickly now you have the company's logos in and guess what you only have to do this once because later you can just duplicate the whole thing over and over and over again so that's how you create the background cool good so that's the thing now you have it how do you export it so to export the dashboard, here's the thing that you need to do. <clears throat> First of all, in the dashboard, sometimes when we create a dashboard, we would have a lot of placeholder. For example, here, this thing should be replaced by uh, a file in Tableau. So you can hide it. The thing about Figma that you cannot do that easily on PowerPoint is that you can hide things by on the left, find that thing, and then click the eye icon. That's how you hide things. And for example, I also like to hide the more info, the word more info here. I can just hide it like this. So I like to export this thing to Tableau. Okay, so how do you export things for the first time? First of all, click it, click the whole canvas, click the whole canvas, and then scroll down on the right. Or, I mean, you should, you should see something that look like this. On the right here at the bottom, you see export, right? Click plus. And then here it asks you like, what's the size you like to export and what file, stuff like that. Bonus tip here, click two. If you click one, because Tableau will try to compress the file, things will look blurry. So click two, two plus. Okay, the second thing is PNG file works the best for me. There's some like techn technological uh, uh, explanation behind it. I don't have it now, but just PNG. Okay, the second uh, thing is, click the three dots and then make sure you click include bounding box. Include bounding box, close it. And then now you can export it. Click export background image, just like this. So now voila, you have the background image. Cool. Now I'm gonna show you how to do, put a background image into Tableau. Okay, I'm gonna, this one, 
first of all, uh, I'm just going to quickly show you. These are the charts that I created, like, like the subtitle, the KPI, the line chart, the bullet chart, the tables. When you create this, make sure you change the background into transparent, like format the background, right hand click, format the background into transparent or matching the color of the dashboard, but transparent will be the easiest. And then you start with a bank, uh, blank space like this. This is a blank space. So this part, you can try to follow along, but because of the time constraint, I'm just gonna keep on doing it and then we can have some Q and A at, at the end. Oh, Yamil? So we have a question, but also if we go 10, 15 minutes more, don't worry about it. I mean, that's okay. Don't worry. Cool. I mean, we, if this is too good to let it go. <laughs> so, and we, and we can, re, we're recording. So if anybody have to leave, hey, you're going to get the recording. So if you have to leave at one, don't worry. We can get the record. You can get the recording. So the question from Beth was, it is necessary to have the image logo with our background? That depends on the practice of your team and the practice of your company. Uh, at Discover, uh, all the dashboard that we create always have Discover's uh, logo on the top left and then our team's logo on the top right. But that is our team's personal uh, preference. You feel free to discuss that with uh, whoever that's paying you and then see uh, what kind of, uh, yeah, it solely depends on you too. Cool. And she had asked specifically about the background. I'm assuming the only, uh, I guess downfall to not having a transparent background is it could clash with whatever you're building. Yep, yep. That, that's true. But the good thing is when I build this white car, they're literally white. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I guess they're slightly off white. Yeah. So if the color doesn't match the background on Tableau, you have to readjust it. So you might as well just make everything transparent on Tableau. But good question. Cool. Good, now let's come back to Tableau. First of all, you start uh, in the tab, in the dash, uh, dashboard tab, you start with a blank canvas. And I, my pre preference always use custom size. And then I usually, use, I mean, personally, I use uh, 1308 to 800, just because after experiment, uh, after experimented with different sizes, I feel like, Eight, like 1308 and 800 match my working computer. But if your company has a different size of working computer or, uh, or for a personal uh, preference, feel free to experiment the size a bit. But for today, we're gonna go 1200 and 744, just to a little bit control over there. And then first thing that you need to do is to click image, drag it in, here, are we good? And then in this box, you're gonna click choose and then go to the download and then find that file. If you cannot find that file, feel free to find the same file from the zip file that we provided at the very beginning. So if Erica can drop that zip file one more time, <laughs> it's in the zip file. So if you click it, choose, and then you should be able to go to that zip file. And I'm gonna, for my purpose, I put in my uh, desktop, I'm gonna click it, background image. And then when you click it and then choose, I like you to choose fit. Remember the file that you have just exported, that one is twice as big. So if you don't click fit, everything is going to be super large. So click fit and then click okay. So that's how you import the image. The second thing that, okay, so it's like this. And you notice that when you import the image, there are a lot of weird spacing around it, right? That's not what you want. So here's what you can do. You can, uh, here, adjust the white space surrounding the image. So here, remove four, change it to zero. And then usually there are one more layer. You can just click on different layers here to make sure that everything goes to zero so that the file fit. Cool. And then well, after you fit the file, here is what, uh, after you adjust the padding like this, now you can start dropping the chart real quick. So here I can do, uh, make sure when you drop the chart, click floating, click floating. So now I'm going to drop the KPI. So, oh, well, before I do that, before I do that, here is another bonus. Click G. You should summon the grid. So on Tableau, it's G. On Figma, it's Shift G. And here's the, the trick. When you open a new dashboard file, the grid option, like in the dashboard and grid option, by default, the grid is 20. But earlier on Figma, we used 12, right? So you need to be in a multiple of 12. 
I'm just gonna do 24 here so that you can see it easier. But the thing is, after coming out with a grid, it's easier for you to align things. So now I'm gonna drag KPI like this. Drop it here, like this. I'm gonna move this all aside here because I have a dedicated box for all filter. Yeah, feel free to follow along here. And then I'm gonna uh, remove the title of KPI and I'm gonna drop the line again. And with the grid and the box, it's easier for you to uh, match things, right? Like this, okay. So just an example, I've dropped two things. Later in your free time, you can do that on your own time. So now you have, look at this, you have dropped everything in the dashboard. And it's a little bit crowded, don't you think? Because everything just so around the edge. So what you can do is now click on different chart, go to layout, and then add outer padding or inner padding, it doesn't really matter. Um, outer, uh, uh, outer padding would be uh, preferable. Okay, I'm gonna do 12. So every chart, just click it and then click outer padding 12, click it, outer padding 12, click it, outer padding rough. Now you already start to be able to breathe a little bit. And for this is actually a tile. This is actually a tile that the tile itself is floating. <laughs> now the whole tile is 12. So. Ta -da. Now you're ready to be able to breathe a little bit. It looked like this. Look like this. Cool. And another bonus for y'all, when you click on, like sometimes when you, people would like to click around, right? But KPI, there's nothing for you to click. Like, there's no additional information after that. The whole dashboard is the additional information for that or the subtitle. It's very ugly. So what you can do is, you know, like in the museum, people will put a, glass surrounding, surrounding the precious thing, you can do the same thing too. Click blank, put it over the KPI. Click blank, put it over the, the title, uh, the subtitle. You can do something like this. Uh, I'm gonna go very easy to see if I remember the dimension very correctly. And the width I believe is, I just decided it's 1200. Yep, something like this. And you can drag it down a little bit. Yeah, so now no one can touch your precious stuff. Like no one can touch it anymore. Cool, we add a cover. So here, you're, oh, I'm sorry. Here is the dashboard already. You already have the dashboard. So now we have like, just use five more extra minutes to talk about some extra content here. How do we add uh, an extra annotation level? This thing looks fancy, but the thing is if we go back to the Figma file, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I actually put it here in the annotation. You can hide it, image under it. So when you create a new image of the dashboard, you can just take a screenshot of the dashboard and then go back to Figma, create a new frame above it. Like go back to uh, the frame, create a new frame above it, match the size. Oh, like this. And then you can just, the fill, you can just adjust the transparency. Let's say I'm gonna do it 60. So now you have a semi-transparent la layer. And then here you can use the text and the error that we were just talking about, just to go crazy with the annotation. And then right before you export the file, make sure you hide the image under it. Make sure you, uh, I think that's the image. Hide the image under it and then export this file and then import it into Tableau. That is how you create the annotation layer, okay? And after this, all you have to do is, uh, this is a floating, by the way, a floating. And then the size of it is just the dimension of the dashboard. And then you just need to click the show at show height icon on it. And this is the show height icon. And you can edit the, I the icon like this, just edit it, type it here. When it's shown, you want to, the text you want to go, if it's shown, then you want it to be less, info. If it's hidden, you want it to be more info. And then you can uh, control the font, the border, the background, everything. And you can just drop it. Oh, what happened? You can just drop th this thing on the top here. Uh, you can, you have, you have time later to play with the formatting yourself. But long story short, you will have something that look like this. Right? So now if I go to full screen, that's your dashboard. And when you click it, you'll hide it. And the functionality is the same thing. 
Cool. I understand that because of time uh, constraint, you're not going to be able to suddenly know all of this. But a good thing is this is a digital world. Feel free to revisit the video later or reach out to me to learn more about them. Cool. So that is how you make them. And that's the final product. And you, you can ask, right, like all oh, of this thing, I could have done it on Tableau. Why bother, right? I actually create one version. Like, this is like just if you did everything on Tableau, everything would be the same. So why using Figma? Someone asked that question earlier, so I'm going to address that now. So if you do everything on Figma, you're going to have this long, long, long list of layout here. And we know that it's really hard to adjust these things on Tableau because Tableau is not user friendly in that way. But if you use Figma, offload all of those things to Figma, it became shorter. And this is going to be very useful in real experience. One dashboard has so many charts in it, you really don't want the visual part to mud the water with the data part. Right? Cool. Good. Are we good here, uh, Erika, before I do my closing statement and give you guys more online resources? Sure, there's a couple questions in the chat if you want to have those. Uh, sure. One, I think, is a repeat, but just so everyone knows, you make your dashboard size and your Figma image size match, correct? Right, correct. And then someone asked, do you think this has a benefit to performance? Um, personally, uh, I think uh, I found it uh, when uh, you upload all the visual part to the photo and then let Tableau process the, the, the only the, the, the charts. Um, empirical, empirically speaking, I did find it faster. And sometimes it's a little bit weird because the, the, the Figma file itself may be big, but they only have to load it once. They do not have to reload the Figma file every time when you change a parameter on the dashboard because the background is still static, right? But if you use uh, Figma, to, uh, if you use Tableau to create all of this, I think to, I'm not sure, but I think uh, they may have to just rerun a lot of this uh, rendering on the fly. Cool, Makes did I answer your question? I think so. So go ahead, close it out. Tell us what you're... Cool, awesome. Uh, let me just go back to here and then... We have gone through so many things today. Okay, well, first of all, here are some more free resources on the internet that I highly recommend you to check out. First of all, Figma has its own YouTube channel. There's another YouTube channel called Design Course and JP Design Ac uh, Ac Academy. These are free YouTube channels that teach people how to do Figma, how to use Figma, and then feel free to learn uh, from this content and be more creative about it. The other thing is there are two very uh, important uh, data fan members that I've learned Figma from, from their uh, YouTube content. First is Autumn Batani, and the second is Lindsay Bezandal. Hopefully I pronounced the last name right. They have their own Figma Tableau prototyping videos. So feel free to go watch them and if you want to learn more about how to do prototyping, the things that I've said at the beginning, uh, they have ex, uh, extensive content on their Tableau, uh, on their YouTube channel. The second thing is feel free to follow these people's Tableau public and their Twitter account and LinkedIn because they have a lot of content that are Figma Tableau crossover. Shantili Jankanad, uh, Pradeep Kumar, uh, Kumar, Rob Crocker, and Robert Jensik. And Feel free to check these two websites as well, Dribble with three Bs, that's not a typo, and Behance. When you go to this website, it's like Pinterest and Instagram. Make sure you key in the keywords like dashboard and UI. You'll learn a lot of content and draw, uh, be able to draw inspiration from these content. Last but not least, uh, Tableau Public. If you check out the this of the day, or go to the Discover tab and then click Business Dashboard, there are actually a lot of dashboard there for you to draw inspiration from. Here are some takeaways that I hope you uh, at least acquire by the end of this session. First of all is let Tableau do data this and let Figma take care of the rest. The rest of interface design, go crazy. If you want to go crazy, do it on Figma. Uh, the second thing is using Figma would really accelerate your dashboard creation process because now 
in the future, if there's a new dashboard that your company wants to create, you do not have to start from, start from scratch by keep on recreating all those rectangles and names. You can just duplicate the file, duplicate the file, and then split them however you want. Also, I want you to stop being afraid of a Figma background image. There are just boxes, texts, uh, and arrows arranged meaningfully within a frame. And this workshop should be the beginning of exploring the potential of Figma in database practice. So be experimental, and I hope that you share your result with me, either on LinkedIn, on Tableau, or on Twitter. Last but not least, I'd like to thank Erica Plemons and Aaron Simons for inviting me to the talk. Uh, Chantilly, Lindsay, and Autumn Robert, they have taught me so much uh, passively by me learning from their YouTube channels and their content online. And thank uh, Discover Credit uh, Business Intelligence team for uh, letting me play with Figma and then use it in our business so that I can learn how to use it better and better over time. So that's it for my talk. And I'm definitely open to more questions now. Uh, yeah, come at me. <laughs> cool, okay. Let's Thank you see. so much, Kevin. I'm going to share, uh, where is it now? I have so many windows open. Share my first screen and hmm. let's close it up with, Who's coming up next? So, oh, if you've really enjoyed today's presentation, we encourage you to come back for some more meetings. We have the twins, and they're going to be giving their Tableau conference presentation. I mean, we cannot see this. We cannot huh? see your screen yet. I cannot see your screen. Check, check it out. Maybe you have it in the other in the other screen. Okay, let's try it again. Is it is it on the screen or no? No, I cannot see it. Oh, no, that's no good. I've lost it again. I've lost my control, meeting controls. Okay, you might be taking over a screen share again, and then I'll try. No, I cannot see it. Um... Uh, Kevin, I cannot hear you. Okay, go ahead. I get it. Kevin, do you mind taking over screen share again? Can you do that? And then I'll try to bump it off, off again. Take am it I over. Still, am I still sharing the screen? No. It, it's a blue you... screen. No, I think, no. I can see okay. only a blue screen. Okay. A blue screen. Let's go with this then. Now, do you see my screen? Yes. There. Yes. There we go. Okay. Thanks, everybody. You know, it's not a presentation unless there's a few technical hiccups. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's event. We have some exciting speakers coming up. We have the twins that they are going to present their Tableau conference presentation on how to do cool stuff in Tableau. As Incredible. someone who wasn't able to attend the conference, I'm very excited to get to see them and get to ask them questions. So it's going to be a great event. If you don't know Ray Gibbler, you should follow him on LinkedIn. He's always posting great Tableau tips. And what he's going to specifically talk to us about in October is his IronViz journey and what he has learned along the way. And finally, if you haven't had enough of Sigma, don't worry, we'll have more. We are bringing Jason Penrod from Playfair Data to talk to mm -hmm. us about more Figma and how you can incorporate that in Tableau. That's Thank right. you all so much for staying. As we mentioned, three of the participants today will be receiving emails from our team, and you can get yourself some swag from the Tableau gift store. And also, as a thank you to our amazing speaker, Kevin, we are going to have you uh, get yourself some cool Tableau gear as well. Thank you. And finally, thank you so much for coming. We'll look in the chat if there are any more questions. And then if not, we'll conclude our meeting. Yeah, if you have any questions, put it here right now. Um, like Erica was saying, I mean, I was on the conference, the Twin Brothers, that was the number one presentation on the conference. Number one. It was repeated twice. You needed to stand up, people sitting on the floor. This is over the top. This is like 
Um, incredible stuff. We're talking about, you will not believe it, what they're doing. It's incredible. This is, that's all I want, I'm going to say. I want to watch it again. <laughs> so incredible stuff. So um, no, thank you so much, guys.